Hello and welcome back to the devlog for the Command Donuts. It has been a while since the last one, but hopefully you'll be able to see some great progress in that time. The biggest gap in my gameplay was that the enemies lack any AI to them, so there's no challenge to it. In previous projects, I've used A-Star Pathfinding. However, for a project like this, it will feel very rigid and not natural, so I went for a different approach. Context Steering is an AI implementation that uses rays all around the unit to see what's nearby. A huge shout out here to Sunny Valley Studios on YouTube for his amazing mini series on the topic. His implementation has been professionally yoinked, so thank you very much for that. By casting a ray from the unit, it can determine if there's any obstacles in the way. And by using a scoring system to determine the best direction to go in to get away from those obstacles, all while trying to move in the direction of the target, which in this case is the player. And by fine tuning the values, the enemies can now somewhat accurately chase the player. One issue I did have though with this was a bug where the enemy was always lose the player when beside them, and it took me ages to realise why this was. Eventually I realised that when the unit casts its ray to check if the player was there, it would miss the collider every time because the collider was just on the unit's feet, not at its centre point. So I fixed this by just chucking another collider on the player for the ray detection. And now they look amazing, following the player around and when in range they start attacking. As I was working on adding new features and data, I realised that a lot of the systems I'd already designed were not exactly the most scalable. So it was time for a big refactor already. The first area with these glaring issues was the unit prefab I had set up. The units in the game were originally working well, but I had no way of loading different types of NPCs with the same prefabs because the objects have really bad dependency issues. So what I've had to do was separate the code and the brains of the unit from the sprites and the visuals. Every NPC will need the same hitboxes, stats, sorting groups, rotation points, so all of these went into a unit base. This is what's instantiated by the spawner, with only the unit's scriptable object passed in to load up all the unique parts including a few additions that I've made. Before, I would store a list of sprites and intended to load them in when spawned. However, as different enemies can have different bone structures, this would be a massive pain in the ass to implement. So instead, I just created a prefab of the body, animator and all, and just add all that to the unit base instead, making everything a lot simpler. I'm still using the same controllers for the units, and now I can just make new bodies, add them to a unit, bam, scalable solution. And to go hand in hand with the structure remake, I redid the animation controllers a bit. In the unit's animation controller, I created two state machines, the sprite flipper and the sprite switcher. What this does is essentially control the sprites when the unit faces a different direction. The first state machine takes a boolean value based on whether the sprite is facing left or right and flips it accordingly by just rotating it along the y-axis. Very easy. Then the second state machine uses a value which says whether the unit is facing up down or straight. I'm already getting this from the rotation points, this is very easy. Because the first one handles left and right, it doesn't matter which way it's facing, both outcomes are straight ahead. And by using this, I can apply different sprites or settings to the unit, so when they face up for example, the body is layered above the weapon, but when they look down, the weapon is drawn above, just for a little depth perception. With all this in play, the sprites now correctly face where they're going and just look great. More work will be done with the animation clips themselves in the future to tidy them up, but for now, they work really well. It's my plan to release this game as a full project once it's done, and depending on how successful I am with this process, I hope to get it on as many platforms as possible. But I've only ever really published one full title, and that was just a mobile game to the Play Store. I've never released anything of this size, so I came up with the idea of a sort of spin-off game of a game that's not been released Makes no sense, but let's do it anyway. So that is why I am here today to proudly present <clears throat> The Command Donuts Assault. The Command Donuts Assault is the exact same game as the Command Donuts, but instead of being this open world experience with loads of fluff shoved in, it's just you in a room against an infinite horde of increasingly difficult enemies. Now you may think this decision was influenced by my recent binge of Vampire Survivors for the second time. And... So the key parts of the survival mode are the infinite spawning of enemies, the level scaling, the simple open map layout, and the fresh runs each time. So the first part I tackled was the spawning. 
The current spawner I have in place works well for one time single point spawners, but that's like the complete opposite of what I want to have in the survival mode. So instead of writing a new spawner, I just expanded the current one with a few options to make it fit both scenarios. The first was adding a ball for looping. So if it's set to true, once an enemy has been spawned, it waits a few seconds and then spawns another one. So that's the infinite bit sorted, but they still just spawn in the same place, which would be ideal if I was making a spawn camping simulator, but I'm not. So the next step was to add an enumerator for different modes. For now, there's only two, which could have been done with a boolean, but I might want to add more in the future. It was then a case of adding a switch statement to see what enums it's carrying into and behave accordingly. Point spawning is the original process, so I just moved that code in there, and the new area spawning will spawn an enemy within an area around a target, which for survival mode will just be the player. This spawn mode can also be used in other places in the game, for example a boss that summons minions. It simply generates a random point around the player exactly 110 units away, which is an arbitrary number I came up with that's far away enough so you won't see it spawning on screen, but close enough to be able to actually reach the player quickly. By combining these two simple additions, I've now created an infinite spawner for survival mode. This will be expanded for level scaling and have the ability to spawn different enemies, but for now it's a great addition. The maps were the easiest addition to the game, as it's basically just a big empty room. So I just created a new scene, called it Factory Survival, drew a big square, job done. As I don't want the infinite game to be infinite, I decided to add a game timer in, so there's a win condition to aim for. So all I needed was a value that's just adding up constantly. When it hits 30 minutes, triggers an event to say to the player, hey, you win, stop it. So that was also super easy to add. This game dev stuff is real simple, right? <laughs> right? And there we have it. A really basic version of a survival mode. Player spawns in, level one enemies spawn in infinitely, and a little text box pops up after 30 minutes. All in all, a job well done. And that'll be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. The Command Donuts Assault will be available soon, so get your pre-orders in now, exclusively at Greg's. Disclaimer, this is not available at Greg's. Why would it be available at Greg's? Do you ever think about things or just leave anything here? Really? Grow up. And so, thank you for watching. For every like and subscribe I get on this video, the game's release date gets brought forward by one whole second. So get clicking, and I will see you in about three months. Cheers.